morning, uh, church, and happy Sabbath. I'd like to welcome all the visitors this morning, especially. It's nice to see you all, and um, I'm glad that you are here with us this morning. May God bless each one of us as we worship Him today. Um, I guess I don't have the clickers, so somebody will do it. Cedric? Uh, okay, so now we are going to uh, sing 672, Spirit of the Living God. and happy Sabbath. Come on, guys. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Are you glad to be here in the house of the Lord? Yes. Amen. I'm glad to be here. The week has been long. I'm glad we can come together and worship and fellowship and celebrate the goodness of God. On behalf of the Chilliwack Church, I just want to welcome all of you that, that you, are, you are special to God and you are special to us. In a very special way, I just want to welcome uh, uh, Owen's family who are here. Owen is one of our candidates who will be getting baptized today. And uh, Angelina, I think they are on their way coming. So glad that you guys are here. Welcome. Welcome. Feel at home. And make this is your home. Amen. It's not going to be the first time. I hope you will be here. It will be the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. And tomorrow, actually, we are celebrating. They are getting married today to Jesus. They are getting married today to God. And tomorrow, they are going to get married to each other. That's how special it is. And I'm so glad that they put God first and then their life second. That's the way we should be. And that's the way we should be, putting God first, number one, in our life. The rest of the thing will follow because he's our creator. And I just want to welcome you in a very special way, feel at home. As, a, as our service continues, I would like to invite my elder to uh, give us an announcement. Good morning to each of you again. Uh, it's good to be back. And uh, it's good to see uh, Mike and uh, Matt and other, others that's here. Good to see you. Happy Sabbath. And oh, Norm and Lori, good to see you. Tomorrow, the church is sponsoring a health expo at Vetter Park before the Cultus Lake turnoff. And after the church service is a potluck, but also a brief training session. If you're not able to come to the training session and would like some cards to hand out in your territory, um, put your hand up and we'll pass them out to you right now. Those that come to the training program after the potluck, we'll hand them out to the rest of you then. But if you'd like some to take with you, Put your hand up. I see in the back row there, we have one. Anyone else would like to take a two, three, or 400? Put your hand up. Right. <laughs> oh, OK. Thanks, Cliff. OK, so um, thank you for that. And. Um, Come by, the, even if you're not volunteering at the Health Expo, come by, support us. We're talking uh, on the, um, the, the facts of nutrition we call New Start. Um, try to do from memory, nutrition, we're gonna spell the word New Start. Nutrition, exercise, water, 
Uh, S stands for um, sunshine. sunshine. T stands for trusting God. Oh, temperance. That's right. Like this. Air, rest, and T is trusting God, which is another form of rest. Okay. So I want to also say in the month of August, happy birthday to everyone who's having a birthday or an anniversary, if we haven't got your name down here. Um, I know Lori and Becky, Tammy, Molly, Caleb, and Phaedra. Happy birthday. Um, the pastor is putting on September 3rd. If you got your phone, pull it out, go into calendars, put plus and add this. Um, a training session for our expectation about how we treat other people. Is that a good summary? And um, September 3rd at 2. And we'd like everyone to be there, you know, because we want you to feel welcome and we're inviting you. Okay, there is also um, 10 days from now, or nine days, Monday, August 9th at seven o'clock online to the uh, BC Conference website. You can, you can join there. There's a training session to become a church treasurer. And um, every church deals with attrition and changes. Some churches actually are small enough that they don't have people qualified to fill this role. If, you're, if you like accounting, like dealing with numbers, go there and join the session because you can actually help other churches from your house. You can do their church treasure accounting from your own home and they, it, you would be a blessing to them, some of these churches, you know, and they have treasures that go on vacation and need people to fill in. Anyone ever go on vacation here? Just me, it looks like. <laughs> But, but it's a really good um, thing if you can actually do that. Monday, August 29th, 7 p.m. You know, every church has needs. Look in your bulletin. We have listed two of our needs. Someone to find special music and someone to help find someone to tell children's story. You know, if, you're, if you'd like to volunteer with that, talk to Letty here. She's our... Uh, administrator for that part for both of those actually so we're going to be welcoming three persons to our congregation today Angelina Owen and Arnold who we accepted his transfer from Tanzania last weekend uh, he texted me and said oh sorry I'm running late Arnold said but when you oh here's in the back stand up Arnold stand up so you know who Arnold is say hi to them if you know where Tanzania, Tanzania is south of the equator, right? Just south of the, now he's in Canada. <laughs> I think it's like monsoon there all the time, isn't it? Monsoon, like lots of rain. So-so, yeah. Okay, well, welcome, Arnold. Good to see you. We're glad you being part of our church here. And I talked to him last night, and he says he wants to help out. He wants to be an active member. And thank you, Arnold, for that. And um, I'll just tell you, Tanzania is on eastern Africa, south of the equator on the Indian Ocean, if you don't know that. So to get here, he had to swim across the north side of Australia. And no, OK. Well, it's good to see you here this morning. And um, we are blessed truly by your presence. the announcement. Um, I just want to thank you also for, on behalf of my dad, to those who have been praying for him. He's okay, and he didn't have the, um, the uh, dengue uh, fever. And also thank you for um, praying for Glenn. He's got COVID the second time. Um, I praise God that he is okay, and um, and uh, first of all, I, I would like to um, share this, um, these verses with you. Then those who gladly receive his 
word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls, which is we have two baptisms today, 3,000 souls were added to them, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. And also I've been um, reading a book of ex, uh, Exodus, Exodus, and uh, um, and um, Moses' song, the song of Moses. It says, "I will sing to the Lord, for the for He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider He has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength, and." song and he has become my salvation he is my god and i will praise him my father's god and i will exalt him the lord the lord is a man of war the lord is his name i continue on but um that's uh, i have to share with you this morning um, amen, and may God bless each one of us as we continue to worship him this morning, and in singing 384, um, okay, safely through another week.
So is that our opening song? Yeah, and then we'll go to the third one. Um, this is our opening song. Um, please, be, uh, please stand up as we sing our opening song. Thank you. Two, five, eight. Two, five, eight. Mm. Uh, five, and We come here, Lord, on this day of rest that you have given us to pause and take a break and to celebrate, celebrate the goodness that you've done in our lives, celebrate the baptism that's happening today with Angelina and Owen, and to celebrate the good news that we have that we can share with others. Thank you for being part of our lives, Lord. Thank you for dying into the cross for us. Thank you for forgiving our sins. Now open our ears to hear your voice today, I pray. Amen. Looking for Ray Dean, where'd she go?
Well, I'd like our deacons and deaconesses to stand here for our offering. Ray Dean's our church treasurer. And um, I know I made an announcement that you can do a training for church treasurer to help out. But today's offering is for the church budget. And I just want to say thank you. Just thank you for your support. Thank you for blessing us. And um, like I said earlier, I thank God for his blessings in my life. And I know you thank him for the, his blessings in your life also. Let's say a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just want to say thanks. You hear us, you talk to us, you answer us. And thank you that we can bless others. Amen. I'd like to ask the children to come forward for the children's story. Any children come up to the front? Inviting all the children to come up front. Okay, can anyone guess what my favorite bird is? Hummingbird, anyone else? Blue jay? Chickadee, look at this, yeah. You like small birds, don't you? Robin? When Vera and I travel, she'll often say, oh, look, there's your friends. When I say, what friends? She says, the Canadians. Do you know what she's talking about now? What? Yes. She's talking about the Canada geese. Yeah, we go across in the US and there's Canadians everywhere. And why do I like them? Three reasons why I like them. There is. I'll show you why. Come here. Stand right here. I need you to stand here. No, you, yeah, you stand right there. And could you stand behind her? And I need you to come here and stand here. And you just stand right there. And can you stand behind him? And you stand behind her. And you go right in the back. Okay, put your arms out like you're a, a goose flying in the wind. Turn this way. Yep, look at me. Put your arms out like you're a goose. How do they help each other? Oh, they're flying, and it's tiring, and the wind's blowing, and the rain's coming down. And the one in the front, this is how they fly. The one in the front is the lowest. And as they go back, you see them in the sky in a V formation, right? Well, they're not straight. The ones behind are higher and higher and higher, behind the first one, who breaks the wind that's blowing out of there. And uh, we won't do any rain, but, but she gets tired. So what does she do? She goes to the back of the line, go, to, go all the way to the back. And this one comes up and fills in now. And they take turns like that because they help each other. And that's why I like Canada geese. Okay. Why else do I like them? Because come over here and hold her hand. Because when they get friends, they are friends for life. 
They are friends for life. Isn't that amazing? Tomorrow, Owen and Angelina is getting married, and that means they're going to be friends for life. What else do I like? I said three things. Guess what the third one is? They're noisy. What type of noise do they make? Quack, quack, quack. Come on, make some noise. Quack, quack, quack. They need some help. Quack, quack, quack. Honk, honk, honk. That's right. Three reasons why I like them. Because they help each other, they're friends for life, and they make noise. And I want you to sit up here for the baptism. I want you to stay here right through the whole baptism. Because the Owen and Angelina are saying they're becoming Christians by being baptized, which means they're going to help each other and they're going to help other people. And they're also saying that they're going to be friends for life with Jesus. When you say you're going to be a Christian, you're going to be friends for life for Jesus. doesn't matter what happens. And our adult Sabbath school is talking about when bad things happen, you're still friends. And they make noise. And as a Christian, you've got to make noise. You've got to say, hey, I want to tell you about my Jesus. Isn't that right? Absolutely. We'll sit here right on the front here, and I want you to watch. They're going to take a vow, which means they're going to be friends for life for Jesus, and then they're going to be baptized. And then collect your uh, offering, and then you come back and sit over here. How about that? Well, I can do the vows, and then you come and watch. Is that all right? Okay. So collect your, collect your coins, and make sure you come back where Elder J.D. has told you. So, boys and girls, as uh, Elder J.D. has shared the story, indeed, I love geese. They have a very powerful leadership style, that they help each other. They don't fight. They work together as a team. So I'm going to invite Owen. Angelina, to come right in front of me right here. Right here. Okay. Yeah. And then you face me. Yeah. All right. So while the kids are collecting their offering, I hope it will not take your attention away from listening from what I have to say to this amazing, wonderful, good-looking young people that I've been working with them uh, through Zoom, in person. They're just an amazing. And I'm glad to be a part of your life and work, uh, working with you and walking with you at the same time uh, toward heaven word. As you are making the decision today to get married to Jesus, to get married to God, that's the most important thing you have ever made in your life. And I mentioned this morning I hope and I wish every young person will make a decision. The first decision is to be with Jesus. The second one, they want to get married, whatever they want to do will be the second one. The rest will follow. Because most of us who make that decision, we don't never look back. We never regretted the decision that we have made to follow Jesus as our personal savior. So since I have spent time with you studying the Bible through Zooms, and I would like to go with you as, you know, I would like to go with you through some commitment and baptism, and sometimes we call them the vows. When it comes to wedding, which is tomorrow, you're going to be saying those, so you have a lot of vows to do. <laughs> it's a very special week for you guys, all right? So I read the statement here, and your response will be, you raise your right hand side and say, I do, all right? If you disagree, then we need to talk later. <laughs> All right, Angelina and Owen, do you believe that there's one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sin and believe that through faith in his shed blood you are saved from sin and its penalty? Do you renounce the world and its sinful ways and have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, believing that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven your sin and given you a new heart? 
Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? Do you believe that the Bible, God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christians you convert to spend time and regularly in prayer and Bible study? Do you accept the Ten Commandments as the transcript of character of God and re revelation of His will? It is your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the fourth commandment, which required the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and memorial of creation. Do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus Christ as the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality as you prepare to meet the Lord? you will witness to his loving salvation and by life and word help others to be ready for his glorious appearing. Do you accept the biblical teaching of a spiritual gift and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identi identifying mark of the remnant church? I do. do you believe in the church organization? It is your purpose to support the church through your tithe and offering so that the gospel can go forward into the world so that Jesus Christ can come? Do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and will honor God by caring for it, avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean food, from the use of manufactured or sell of alcohol beverages, the use of manufacture or sell of tobacco in any of its forms of for human consumption and from the misuse of trafficking in narcotic or other drugs. Amen. Do you know and understand the fundamental biblical principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church? You purposely, by the grace of God, to fulfill his will by ordering your life in harmony with these principles. Do you accept the New Testament uh, teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to be baptized as a public expression of your faith in Christ and his forgiveness of your sin? I do. do you accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, language are invited and accepted into his fellowship. Do you desire to be a member of this local congregation of the Chilliwack Seventh-day Adventist Church? Amen. Amen. Church, you have seen all the young people here giving their heart to Jesus. And they have desired to be a part of this church family. Can I get someone to make a motion, to make a motion that we accept them subject to their baptism to be a member of this church? Look at this hand. And those who are in favor, can I see all your hand? Amen. Amen. I become more emotional. God is good. And all the time everybody say, God is good. So we're going to transition. Uh, if you're going to go through here, we're going to go in the pool, just right in the back here. And then, children, you will watch while the event is happening. Okay.
did. This is a beautiful and wonderful moment for all of us as God's children. The Bible says when man of God give their heart, there's a great joy in heaven. There's a great party in heaven. There's a great happy joy in heaven. If there's such a joy in heaven, how about for us here on earth? Amen. And I trust and believe that the parents of uh, Yelena and the future parents-in-law are very joyful as for us as a church. And so, Angelina, it is my privilege, my honor, to today uh, baptize you as you have decided to follow Jesus as your personal savior. It is my desire to baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. to follow Jesus as your personal Savior. It is indeed my desire and my joy to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Amen. 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 decision to follow Jesus as I should have. And I wanted to give my life to Jesus. Is there anyone who would like to say, you know, the next baptism, I would like to be a part of that? Is there anyone? And if you, all of you have given your life to Jesus through baptism, and of course sometimes things happen in life, and you decided you walk away from God, you walk into the world, you get involved in some kind of things, and today you feel that, you know what? I want to recommit my life to Jesus. 
I want to give my life again to Jesus. Are you there? The Bible talk about, you know what? There's only one baptism. But when one walk away from God, it doesn't hurt for them to recommit their life to Jesus through rebaptism. And God will say, I welcome you, my son, my daughter. And he will say, I love you, my son, my daughter. Are you there? Is there anybody there? And for some reason, if you're feeling it sometime publicly, you don't want to raise up your hand, I encourage you to speak to me. To my elders, we'll work with you so that we can work together to give you a heart for Jesus. My friends, this world is not our home. We don't know how soon we can continue to live in this kind of world we see. I encourage you to recommit your life. For those of you who have already given your life to Jesus, may today be a renewing of your vows. May today be a reminder the day that when you give your life to Jesus through baptism, may it remind you to go back to that day and recommit your life to Jesus. So as we are changing, I think the praise team are going to continue with some songs. And then I will be back. So this is the song that we are going to sing, and so there's a uh, men's uh, part and ladies' part. So when the ladies part, you know, ladies men, sing. Men start. Men start. Yeah. Yeah.
music. So our scripture reading today is from Acts 2 verses 38 and 39. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are afar off as many as the Lord our God will call. Amen. 
See, for me, I knew that I have to be here quickly, so I have to change quickly. For them, they're taking their time. Once again, I would like to welcome all of you, those who came a little bit uh, after a special time, and you're still a special time. Just want to welcome you. I'm glad that you can make it here this morning to worship with us, to celebrate the goodness of God. For us, Sabbath is a celebration of good, God goodness. After you work all the six days, God say you need to rest on the seventh day. And that's why we are here. We are here to have great time. We are here to celebrate who God is. And so my topic that I'm going to share with you this morning is continuation, the mission, and the purpose why baptism is so important. The message is repent. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever repented for something that you have done? Have you? Apart from being with God, either with your spouse or your children, your grandchildren, your co-workers. You know, we are living in a world that many people don't want to admit anything because it's not easy. Submission is something so challenging and very difficult, even though I know I'm wrong. How many of you think that it's so easy to admit when you, you make a mistake? Come on, be honest with me. How many of you find it so easy to apologize? It gets easier after a lot of practice. It gets easier after a lot of practice. I like that. If you tell me it is easy for you to apologize, to admit your mistake, you may not be human. You may be something else. Because as human being, as I am, self always take over. It is always about me, no way. Got to be strong. You know, because submission is weaknesses. A lot of people think that. Apologizing seems to be weaknesses. But let me tell you, that's the bad news. The good news is being humble to admit your own mistake is the most powerful, strong things when you realize your own mistake. You wonder why Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. That's just how powerful it is. You see, when, before Jesus came, before he started his ministry, what happened? God called a man by the name John the Baptist. The Bible says the Spirit took him into the wilderness. And as he was in the wilderness, he was preaching the message of what? Repentance. He said, repent for the rem submission, remission of your sin, for forgiveness of your sin. For the kingdom of God is at hand. For the kingdom of God is near. We need to repent. Because why John the Baptist was preaching the message of repentance? Because he found that the Jewish the Israelite, the one that God has called them to be, the light, the one God called them to be, the way, the one God called them to show the light to the world, have turned their back to God. And when Jesus came, who turned their back to Jesus? It was the religious leaders, the one that God called them to be the light. And I wonder why God Call this man who will be eating honey and locust. How many of you have eaten locust? Anybody here? <laughs> How about cricket? No? I have eaten cricket. They taste good. They are clean, by the way, because the Bible talks about cricket. And the Bible says John the Baptist was preaching the message of repentance. Turn away from your sin for the remission of your sin for the Son of God is coming. And when Jesus came, thousands and thousands were flocking to John the Baptist into the wilderness to be baptized. And it came at a time when Jesus was ready to start his ministry. He walked into the river to John. And John like, what do you want? 
you need to baptize. He said, no way, not me. You should be the one baptizing me. And Jesus says, I will do this as an example. You know, sometimes the best thing to be with uh, children or anybody to be an example, to be an example. And Jesus is our, the best example. And so after John the Baptist preached and all this, Jesus started his ministry. And he was preaching the message of repentance. God always is interested in his human being, in the creation that he has created. God is interested in each one of us. He's looking for you. He has the best interest of each one of us in his heart. When he created Adam, he wanted them to have a relationship with him. But when Adam walked away from God, God never gave up. God never gave up. See, the word Adam, according to the Hebrew, it means human. The word Adam means human. God continued to look for another human, for another Adam, who will want to have a relationship with him. He chose Moses. Moses failed. He chose Abraham. The list goes on and on. They continue. He chose the prophets. He chose the kings. One after another, keep turning their back to God. And God never gave up. And he will never give up on you and me and all of us. He will never give up. Just like many of you who are here, children, who have children, you never give up on your child. You never give up no matter what kind of thing they're doing. No matter how obnoxious they are. No matter what kind of friend they're hanging around. Even to the point some are ending up on Hastings Street. You never give up. I met a friend of mine. We came together from the same country. We met a couple of weeks ago. And he has one boy. He has four girls. I think five girls. And this boy has made a decision to follow the, the other path. He got into a wrong crowd, wrong group of people, and he's now into drugs. The week that I met with him, they just came back from the hospital. And he was sharing with me a picture of his son. He's in the hospital. He was overdosed. And he was unconscious. And me and him kind of weep. Because many of us who immigrated from other part of the world, coming here for a better life, and you bring your children, you want the best for each one of them. And when that happened, what happened? You break your heart. It break your heart. And they love the boy still until now. And that's who God is. That's who God is. No matter how much we messed up in life, no matter how much, how far we have gone away from you, from him, he still say, my son, my daughter, I love you. And here Paul after Jesus resurrected, Jesus left them. He said, wait, don't go. I will send the Holy Spirit to come upon you so that you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, Judea, and the entire world. That message that was left for a few people, that was only 12 disciples. Actually, there were 11 because the other one committed suicide. He had made the wrong choice. He sold his own master, the one who came for him. He sold him for 30 pieces of silver. That's why sometimes the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evils. It's not money itself, but the love of money is the root of all evil. The whole world is controlled today because of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. And so Jesus left and told his disciples, 
Now I give you the mission. I will give you the purpose why I came. And now I want you to carry on. And so after Jesus left, give them the power of the Holy Spirit. Now Paul, I mean Peter, with all other disciples were preaching in the book of Acts 2, 38. Say, then Peter said to them, who is them? Because they were talking about who? Before that, and let me retract you back. Paul was, Paul and Peter were preaching. And this time it was Peter. He preached the message that Jesus whom you have crucified, Jesus whom you have denied, Jesus whom you have turned your back upon has resurrected. He is alive. He is not dead anymore. You are the one who nailed him on the cross. You are the one who will pay the penalty for sin. And then they asked Peter, what shall we do now? And Peter responded, repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. Peter was straightforward. Have you shared with them all the story of Jesus? How they crucified, how they denied him, how they turned their back to him, how they put him into the tomb. The thing that he does set over is done deal. But the Bible says after three days, the tomb opened. And he is alive. When the ladies went to the tomb to go and open, he was not there. The angel appeared to them. He is not here. He is alive. Why are you looking the living among the dead? Go tell his disciple he's no longer here. Friends, if Jesus would have died, and stay in the tomb, there's no point for me to be a Christian. I would have been in a different religion probably. And I think the same with you. Amen. Amen? The reason why you and I are Christian because Jesus raised from the dead. He has overcome death. He is alive. And he's coming. He's coming as King of kings and Lord of lords. He's not coming to die on the cross anymore. He's not coming to die for you on the cross anymore. He is coming as King of King and Lord of Lords to take you and I from this world. He is going to bring all this fire disaster, tsunami, whatever, all the political turmoil that is happening. He is going to bring it to an end. Where there will be no more corona. Where there will be no more sickness. Where there will be no more sorrow, no pain, no cancer. That's the promise. And then you continue. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off as many as the Lord our God will call. Now, that was in a very small area. And then this is the promise. How far? As far as off. It's talking about you and I. I was born in the continent of Africa. That's way far. Some of you have opportunity to be there like JD. He liked travel, this guy. He loved vacation. He just came, I'm going to give him a lot of work this, this time. He's not going anywhere. He traveled all over those places. And because of this gospel that was promised today, you and our brothers and sisters, because it was promised that this message, this gospel of the kingdom will go through all the world. And today we are brothers and sisters. And then he continued. That those who gladly receive his Word, where what? Where what? Those who receive his word were baptized. And that day, about how many? Whoa. How many churches are there now? 3,000. How many churches would that be? You know, if I count, maybe a couple of us here, maybe about 100. That would be like a lot of churches. Just that day, there were 3,000 souls were added to them. Wow. And they continue how? Steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. In the breaking of bread and in prayer. Church, we need to go back to the, to, to the origin, how Christianity originated. After they accepted Jesus Christ, they continued steadfast in studying the word, in praying together, in fellowshipping, in breaking bread. Not only once a month, not only twice a month. 
Pollock. I don't know why did we invent the Pollock that we can only have it only once or twice a month. But if all our churches, I'm telling you frankly speaking, that we take this message and implement it right away, say, you know what? We're going to be fellowshipping. We're going to be stayed first. We're going to be spending time in doctrine. We're going to be breaking bread. We're going to be praying. What will happen? What do you think what will happen? But because we are so busy, right? We can't have, you know. Of course, the culture was there small, probably. I understand that it was, you know, they were probably farmers or maybe just, you know, patient. They don't have businesses like we do. They don't have, you know, eight to four type of job that you come here all exhausted. But there's no excuse. I mean, we can find excuses for not to do anything. I can find excuses for anything that I don't want to do. And then you continue. And the Lord added to the church, how many? Daily. Those who were being saved. The Lord added daily. Think about it. Now think about it. If this is what God in the student started with, why is it that it's hard for us nowadays? What happened when we are baptized? Every sin is forgiven. The Spirit is given to us. We are adopted into God's family. Wow. Angelina, Owen, you have a big family. Right here. We are adopted into the family. And Corey, good to see you. Good to see you. God is good. We become part of the family. You know, I love all of you to sing this song. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Are you glad to be a, family, a part of the family of God? When God calls you to be baptized and you are cleansed, he promised you to give up the spirit to empower your life. Baptism comes with the results of God empowering us with his Holy Spirit who will direct our life, who will direct our decision-making process. Every day is decision-making. And sometimes we make some rough, tough decisions. Some of them we look back, you say, wow, what kind of bad decision I made. But don't, don't depend on that. When you make a bad decision in the past, God says, don't look back. Look forward. Look forward. Look forward. Because I have been there. You have been there. The bad is already done. You need to look forward to the goal. The mistake has done. Time to move forward, my brothers and sisters. And the Bible says baptism is dying to all sinful ways of life, burying our sins in the watery grave, rising up again out of the water to walk a new life. Owen, Angelina, and all of you, and Corey, not too long ago, and many of you, and of course, my three children, Ochaya, Onyango, and Mito, and Dave, and I'm looking forward to those of you who would like to read, baptize, to give your life to Jesus. The time will come. Baptism doesn't mean you are. Baptism doesn't mean you are. It means you are committed. If you are looking for, for perfection, to be perfect in order to be baptized, then you're not going to get it. Unless if you're not human. Baptism is not the end of Christian life. It is the beginning. It's a new beginning. It's a new walking with Jesus. It's a first step. Baptism gives us a new sense of freedom. A sense of freedom. I don't know about you. I found freedom in Jesus. I don't find freedom in anything of this world. The freedom of this world can be given to you. It can be taken away. If you are fighting for freedom, 
I'm telling you, be somewhere else. Right now, I'm telling you, every time I keep saying, we are still blessed to be in this part of the country, part of the world, that we still have freedom. No matter what you, do, you say, that's up to you. But I came from where you know what freedom is all about, what freedom will look like, what it is not. And some of this freedom will be taken away. And when it is taken away from you, what are you going to do? Praise God for that. Amen. I love that. Because that's when our faith can be tested. That's when our faith in God can be more stronger. That's because our freedom is in Christ. Our freedom is not in this world. This world is not our home. And it's unfortunate. Sometimes Christians, we fight for the freedom of this world that Jesus said, this world is not my home. We are just passing through. We are passing through this world. Baptism gives us a new spiritual power in our lives. When we're in Christ, we have that power. That power to forgive. Even though, even though, you may not, you might have contributed only 2% of the problem. You still can say, my brother, you have 90% of the problem, or 99% I have that one, and you tell them because of that 1% that I own, I'm going to take it 100% of that one. What a life can change. But sometimes we focus, I'm right. I'm right. Mrs. Right and Mr. Right. Mrs. Right and Mr. Right. Friends, sometimes we've got to be humble enough to admit when we messed up. Baptism is a symbol of our loyalty, commitment, and our allegiance to Jesus Christ. Baptism is not something, it's just a commitment. When we are baptized, we declare our allegiance. We take a public stand like Owen and Angelina has done. We show whose side we are on. Which side are you on? You need to be on the side of Christ. Believers down through the centuries have experienced the joy of making a full commitment to Christ through baptism. Friends, I made my life, I make a commitment to Jesus 20 plus, 30 plus years ago under the mango tree. Under the mango tree, a missionary came and they talk about, oh yeah, you know what, if you attend our meeting five times, you will get this small black book. It was written in my own language. And I was, what is that black book? I want to get that book because we didn't have much to read. Nothing. If you get a book, only the teachers have that textbook. They will take a piece and write on the blackboard and that's it. But when you got something to read, and I was someone who loved reading, and I said that book, I will get it. I started attending one night, two nights, three nights, four nights, five nights. Yeah, I got that black book and I started chewing it. I started enjoying it. And then I'd read the word that Jesus is coming again. I read the word. you got to do this. I'm like, wow. You know, we used to do certain things. I'm like, wow, this word's telling me not to do it. My life started changing around like a clock. And from that day on, I never looked back. Who thought one day a child like me, a son, someone who was born somewhere under the mango tree, who was walking probably with a little short, with no shoes. He started wearing shoes probably at the age of maybe even 14 or 15. Will be standing somewhere here in a place called Canada or Chilliwack. It is only by the grace of God. Can you say amen on that, my brothers and sisters? He walked me through the valley of the shadow of death and he brought me this far. He walked through me, the bullet flying over my head. I have to fall down and God say, I have a plan for you, my son. And he has a plan for you. And today, I mean, who thought one day I would be standing here? I couldn't make a decision. When I came here, so much temptation to make money, to work on Sabbath. But I say, God, I will try to be faithful to you. And indeed, here I am. Here I am. What steps should I person take before being baptized? Number one, repentance. Repentance. Believe. Learn. There is an 
instances in the Bible also when people were rebaptized. Just in case if any one of you out there thinking, you know what? It has been a long time. I've walked away from God many times. I've messy life, things in my life. Is it possible for me to recommit my life to Jesus? Is it possible for me to get rebaptized? The answer is yes. Because an individual may desire to be rebaptized if they once were baptized and departed from Christ, but now long to return. Just like a prodigal son. You know the story of the prodigal son. He said, Father, I'm no longer to be called your son. Please accept me as your servant. What did the father say? No, 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 no. Don't even, no discussion about that. Get the best gown, the best lamb, whatever. We are going to have a party because my son is back. That's who God is. Rebaptism. They are once were baptized and departed from Christ, but now long to return. If you want to come back to God, you want to recommit your life to Jesus, that's a rebaptism. They are committed Christians who have discovered the truth of God's word and desire to be part of his commandment, uh, keeping people. Rebaptism is possible. Recommitting life to Jesus is possible. But, but you know what, let me tell you this. It is, doesn't mean that, okay, every single thing I swear, should I get baptized? No. Is it like every time maybe, you know, I did something that I shouldn't be able to do, should I get rebaptized? I don't think that's what we are talking about. We are talking about big stuff. Big stuff that when you mess up, you walk away from God. And you want to recommit your life to Jesus. Rebaptism is possible, is biblical. How important is baptism, by the way? We should talk about John 3, 5. Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. This is one of the wealthiest men who went to Jesus at night time. You know who I'm talking about? about? Nicodemus. He was afraid to come during the day. He came at night time because he was such a person of high position. What will people think of me if I go during the day to talk about Jesus about baptism? What will they think about me? You know, that's kind of who we are, right? We're always afraid what people will think about us. Let me tell you, don't, don't even think about that. I don't care what people think about me. You should not care how people think about you as long as your relationship with Jesus is solid. Amen. Amen. When you're making a decision to follow Jesus, nothing has to come between you, how people think about you or they don't think about you. That is none of their business. Nicodemus say. Jesus answered, mostly assured you, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What? And you know the story. Of course, if you don't, please talk to me later. We'll have some discussion about that. The story of Nicodemus is a very powerful story. Mark 16, 16 says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. See, baptism is related to salvation. Like I said, baptism is a commitment. This is not the end of it. Baptism is dying to all sinful ways of life, burying our sins in the watery grave, rising up again out of the water to walk a new life. Wow. Baptism doesn't mean you are perfect. It means you are committed. <laughs> baptism is not the end of the Christian life. It is the beginning. Baptism gives us a new sense of freedom. Sense of freedom. Baptism gives us a new spiritual power in our lives. Step to baptism, repent, believe, learn. Act 22, 16, and now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. And wash away your sin, calling on the name of the Lord. What are you waiting? And Jesus says, 2 Corinthians 6, 2, Paul says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 
today, now, not tomorrow, not next year. What are you waiting? What are you waiting to commit your life to Jesus? And if you have committed your life to Jesus, I would like you to recommit your life to Jesus. I would like you to renew your vows with Jesus. When you mess up in life in the past, friends, I would like you to think twice. If rebaptism is something that you are thinking about, or if you have never been baptized, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. God bless you. Amen. As the praise team is coming up, we have done uh, some baptism sometime in the month of July, July the 9th. And I would like to invite you in front. Come in front here, uh, uh, Corey. Corey, can I invite you to come in front? How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Corey is a young man that I baptized in the month of July the 9th, right? Yes. That's right. And so we have a great time, and he also got married not too long ago. He was away for his anniversary, I mean, not anniversary, honeymoon. Hon hon honeymoon? honeymoon? That's right, honeymoon, <laughs> right? So he was for his honeymoon. I would like also to invite uh, Diana. Can you come in front here? These are wonderful young people who are joining our church. And uh, amen, amen. And Owen and uh, Angelina, can you guys come and join us in the front here? Amen, amen. This is our new family, our church family. And church, as you see them here, I would like to see your hands, how much you can support them. And so today we're going to, uh, you know, can I get someone to make a motion? Do you accept Corey? Uh, how do you pronounce your last name? Correcto. Correcto. As a member of the Chilo Seventh Adventist Church, you can. All right, all right. That's second. All in favor, can I see your right hand? Amen, amen, amen. Of course, with uh, Owen and Angelina, we already did that before. So I want to welcome all of you. This is your baptismal certificate. I will give them later. I have to sign them. They have been printed uh, carefully and very in need with a very amazing person. Do you want to know who she is? Yes. We're going to disclose her name. She told me I shouldn't be saying that. Okay, I see who you're looking at. All right. Lori. <laughs> Laura is an amazing, she printed, you guys want something to be printed on the certificate? That is the person you need to go to talk to. Laura, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Sure. Go for it. Well, I want to invite uh, both of you to stay around after the service in the rear, because people are going to want to come and congratulate you. Yes. They're going to want to offer their blessings, and I'm going to be giving them a church directory with a pen in it. And I hope you say, pull that out. Let me put a heart by my name. Put a star by my name. This is who I am. Give me a call if you're going to move. Yes. Give me a call if your car breaks down, yes. you know? Amen. You know? Amen. I'll call you if there's some function going on yes. in church yes. and you haven't heard about it, you know? Amen. And um, Amen. take that pen out and mark your name in the back and offer them God's blessings in their life, Amen. you know, and that you're praying for them. Amen. And I'm going to ask Arnold also to step out back because he just recently transferred his membership. Yes, come on off here, and, Arnold. Oh, he's right here. Yeah, and Arnold, <laughs> stay, stay in the back so people can congratulate yes. you also. So after the closing song, we're going to line up there. People can shake your hand or we can even go to the fellowship. No running away. We're having some lunch and so we can chat, okay? You guys okay. can have, go have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
we are doing the benediction, but before, before I do that, I really want to recognize the trainers for their commitment and recognize them they're celebrating their 50th, 51, 50. 51 anniversaries. Did you hear that, Owen? <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Corey? <laughs> and Diana? Do we all heard that, those of us who are still? You know, I'm celebrating my 20th soon at the end of this month. And at the end of this month. The end of this month, next month. The beginning of next month. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just want to recognize your congratulations. And you have attended this church for how many years? 60? 60. 60 years. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. We are blessed to have you here as part of our church family. Thank you for your music, your talent, and we had a great fellowship at your place. I was wondering if we can do it every Sabbath, right? <laughs> it's just amazing, I'm telling you. Everybody really say, Pastor, where can we do this more often? I'm like, well, open your home. You know, if you have a backyard like his, you know, we can come over there, all right? So it's so beautiful. Thank you. We want to say congratulations on your anniversary and uh, pray for those of us who are still looking forward to be there. And the young one, of course, the school will be starting the next few hours, not days, maybe. Let's pray. Creator God, thank you so much. You are an awesome and wonderful God. We are glad that we can worship a God that loves us so much, a God that forgave, a God that restored the broken heart. We thank you for the life. We thank you for the young people who are giving their life to you and giving their life to each other. Lord, I want to pray for Corey and Diana as they started this journey of their marriage. I pray that, Lord, you will bless them abundantly. You will walk with them, give them guidance and wisdom. I pray for Owen and Angelina, Lord, as they give their heart to you, Lord, and tomorrow they're planning to give their heart to each other. Father, I pray for each one of them for a special anointing and blessing of the Holy Spirit. I now pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for Owen and Angelina, that Lord, may you bless them, may you empower them, that they will become indeed the light, the salt to their family, to their friends, to their co-workers, and wherever they go, may people be able to see Jesus through each one of them. Bless us now as we go to our various places until we meet again. If we don't meet anywhere in this world, it's my prayer that we will meet at the feet of Jesus when he comes to take us home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, after, the, after we finish going from here, those of you who are the first time across the building there, there's a gymnasium there, we're having fellowship lunch, potluck. If you didn't bring anything, don't worry about it. We have enough food for you to eat. So don't go away. God bless you and have a wonderful Sabbath. Can I invite Angelina and uh, Owen to come here? You have some beautiful flowers.